when uh, working with a modeling system, a finite element modeling system, and a true modeling system like OCalc, you're often uh, inclined to compare the results to what you get using simplified hand calculations. And you might be surprised to find out that you get different results than the traditional simplified hand calculations would give you. And a really simple example of this is in the case of a simple down guy. So here I have modeled the hand calculations of a very simple down guy, where I have a thousand pounds of tension here. I have uh, it applied at the top of my pole, which is 400 inches above the ground line. And just to make my math super duper simple, I have a 45 degree down angle. And so you get exactly what you'd expect you get. You get 14, 14. And everyone's done this hand calculation. This is a function of the cosine of the declination angle. And so, you know, let's go ahead and have that number. And what happened, exactly what you think would happen would happen. You get a commensurate increase in the amount of um, tension in the down guy. Now, obviously, you still have a thousand pounds of horizontal component in, in this guy. And you have, you know, a vertical component as well. But the tension in the wire to supply that thousand pounds of offsetting um, tension in the purely horizontal plane is, in this case, 2236. But let's go back to our simplified example to make life easier. Right, 45 degree down, very, very simple. So now I set up this exact same scenario in OCalc. I have a pole where I have set it so that there's exactly 400 inches above the ground line. I've set a span at the top. I've set my insulator to have zero height, so it's right smack dab on top of the pole. I put a thousand pounds of static tension into this wire. So we look here. If I go to my tension, there's exactly a thousand pounds. Now it's very important when you do this, you do two things. First of all, you have to go into your load case and you have to set your wind to be zero because you don't want any, you want just the tension component if you're going to compare apples to apples. And the second is you have to make sure that you go into your load factors and set your tension your tension load factors to one. Actually, set your, all your load factors to one and set your guy factors to one. So set everything to one. So you are now doing the exact same calculation as that um, as that hand calculation that we saw. And if we go ahead and we look at our um, guy tension versus wind angle, remember there is no wind you'd be surprised to see that we have on the order of 1,310 pounds, not the 1,400 that we saw when we did the hand calculations. So the question is why? Well, there's two things going on here. The first thing we note is that um, in a system like this, if I go to Tools and I actually view my mesh, you will see that the actual pole itself when it is deflecting so when the pole is is deflected there is some energy used in that deflection of the pole and that there is also an elastic elongation of the span so when we set this thing up up we, we set in the bedding factors and we set in the material properties of the guy wire and as this tension is applied, the pole deforms and the guy wire elongates. Now at some point we reach equilibrium where the elongation of this wire and the deformation of this pole um, are, <coughs> are both the same and we as a result have a situation where the pole itself is providing some of the resistance to this tension. And so unlike the super simplified model that we saw when we did it by hand, where the pole, in fact, does nothing, you actually are having the pole take some of the load and the guy takes some of the load. And that's realistically what's going on. So that's one source of difference. Well, you say to yourself, well, we can, we can certainly get around that. What if we just go into the pole itself? And now I would never suggest you do this, but you set the elastic modulus to nothing. So now we have an, no elastic modulus whatsoever. And you see we got closer. We got closer to that 1,400 pounds, but we didn't actually get there. And the question is, why is that? 
the pole is no longer taking any of the load. Um, it just is elastically deforming with zero resistance, acting gimbaled, as it were. And yet, the down guy is still not getting the full 1,400 pounds that we saw when we did it by hand. Well, the second thing you have to understand is that OCALC really models the geometry of the pole. So if we look at a classic down guy installation, unlike our hand calculations where the guy is attached to some notional point directly at the center of the pole, the guy is actually attached to a guy hook mounted on the face of the pole. The pole has some certain um, diameter at this point. So the radius, there's a radius offset of this attachment point. As a result, any vertical component of tension in this guy wire is translated into offset bending moment. And that offset bending moment counteracts uh, or, or uh, actually allows the vertical component of load to actually provide some amount of guying because it it counteracts the motion of the pole and it, and it provides an additional guying force. So rather than being a pure tension up and over and through, we have an offset bending moment. That offset bending moment is notionally a lever effect in this portion of the pole, and that lever effect is counteracting the tension of the span that as applied. So when we look at our pole, <coughs> if we go to the circumference section, we can see that the circumference of the tip um, is 21 inches. If we knock that value down, or attempt to go to zero, now OCALC won't actually allow us to go all the way to zero because that wouldn't make any sense. Now you say, oh hell, well now we're actually over. Well the reason is that the convention for setting up your guys in OCALC is that the distance of the anchor away from the pole is from the center of the pole. And so in order to get exactly 45 degrees, you have to make sure that you compensate for the fact that the ground line circumference is 33, almost 34 inches in this particular case. So we go ahead and make that adjustment. And we go back and we look at our oh, guy. So let's go back and look at our spreadsheet. And 14.14.2, and now when we made the system, now remember we couldn't quite get the, the pole to be zero degree circumference. It doesn't allow that at the tip, so we're just a teeny bit off, but we are now at 14.14.5, so that's, you know, right there. So you can see that the source of any difference between your hand calculations and what OCALC is coming with, up with is the fact that OCALC is in fact more realistically modeling all the forces involved than your simplified hand calculations can do. But once you understand what the sources of those differences are, I think you can see that OCALC is in fact giving you a much more realistic number than a simplified number would give you. But it can be a little disconcerting when you go and you try to do a simple verification of an OCALC result using your tried and true hand calculations and you find out that they're slightly different until you understand why.